first of all, uh, thank you for having me. My name is Suleiman Abakarumi. I represent the good people of Gumi Bukumi for that instance. Um, the main primary objective of this bill is to bring accountability to, to the armed forces. Um, look, other clients in US, UK, and other developed nations do have such agencies where all their uh, military procurements are carried out by that agency. Now what we have in Nigeria at the moment is the military would uh, specify what they need, they would expand and buy what they need, and at the end of the day they will account. That means they do the whole uh, process on, on their own, uh, which has a lot of lapses. Um, we have to uh, create an agency, which this bill seeks to do, that would be focused on all the logistics the army needs to function, the army and all the armed forces. Now, removing that function from them gives them the opportunity to focus on what they need to do, their primary objective, that's the uh, securing the, the, the lives and properties of Nigeria. Uh, but at the moment, what, what is happening is uh, uh, changing the nation at per se, because we don't know how many bullets are being purchased. We don't know how many are being expended. We all get the story, the, the uh, reporting from one, the same person that you give money, the same person will come and account to you, but we don't know how these things are, are being carried out. But if we want accountability, then somebody else should be responsible for that because if that person doesn't do what he's supposed to do, the army would complain. I know, and uh, people would know what is happening in, in the armed forces. Uh, we are expending a lot of money, you know, in trillions, which the same amount of money, when you see what other countries are doing with the same amount of money, you'll be shocked. Uh, South Korea is sending uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles now. They can, they've launched such. Nigeria is nowhere close to that. And our budget military spending is close to, to, to that. Now, I think, so we need to, uh, you know, put our act together through uh, uh, this agency that we want to be created so that our military spending will be controlled you know, and, uh, in an accountable manner. Now, another thing is uh, creating specialization. Now when, you, when, you, when one agency purchases arms, ammunition, uniforms and all the uh, items they need for uh, that the Army, Navy and Air Force needs, there will be specialization, there will be uh, uh, Industries would come up, would be developed because of that. Let's say you're buying helmet, uh, similar helmet for all the armed forces. And now you see power of purchasing, bulk purchase. There will be good discount. You, you can create an industry just to produce helmet locally because there's volume. Because the army, the, uh, the Navy combined is uh, a very huge order that can sustain any uh, factory that can come up from that. Now, it's also there's a lot of benefit from creating this uh, agency if, if this bill passes. The point of uh, elections now, in the, end, the tail end of our, our term, um, I, I, I think uh, by the grace of God I've been able to uh, do what I've done for my constituents and the outcome of 2023 election would tell me whether, if my scorecard is good or bad. If my people come out in mass and vote for me, I, I then it tells me that what I have done in the last uh, three and a half years is, is excellent and people appreciate it. And if I'm not voted, then that means I've, uh, I've come short. Uh, I, well, one thing I would want to uh, mention as an achievement for me, apart from all the uh, structural developments and so on and so forth, is, is the, the mindset change that people can hold leaders accountable for, for, for their terms. You know, and uh, if once, because this is what I'm seeing now, people are beginning to ask questions, what have you done? Okay, you want to, what have you done when you were this and that? And I think that is really good, that's the way to go forward, because somebody will not come and waste your four years you know, and uh, people would say, okay, let's wait till election. No, 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 no. 
people should ask questions, people should demand for change, people should demand for, for, for development and progress and all that. And that is what I'm seeing in my community. People are being exposed. Uh, uh, before, before my constituents would sit until you tell them, ah, there's an application for a job, go and apply. No. Now they would apply and say, I have applied. Yeah, and then you follow the process, do the right thing, and uh, you know, with God you can get. And so that mindset change is, I think, one of the things that I, I would want to see it as uh, my biggest achievement. Okay. So uh, I, I think Nigeria doesn't need to, to experience what we have experienced in the last, uh, in the last uh, three and a half years. We, we need someone that can be a unifier, because right now we are greatly polarized. You know, there's so much division, tribal, in the tribal line, in the religious line, and all, and so on and so forth. But we need someone that would come and unify Nigeria, so that we can we can only work together. We can only work together if we believe we all believe in Nigeria. All we all work for the same goal, and we all believe in in in, in the project Nigeria. Uh, so, looking putting all the, the candidates on on uh, on the scale, I think. Without bias, I think PDP candidate Atiku Abaka is the right candidate for, for this country at this moment. Wow. Uh, one, even the combination. You know, every, every uh, side, the two major sides the, the, uh, the, uh, in terms of religion, there's a balance. I think that's, that speaks volume. When you have both religions being, rep uh, representing, being, rep uh, uh, being represented in the leadership, I think it's a... It's a speaks volume. Then, secondly, uh, experience. He was a vice president of Nigeria, and uh, he has experience. If whatever mistakes he has made before as a vice president, he has opportunity to correct them. That's why I said we don't need to experiment, bring in someone that has not uh, sat on that seat. Being, being a governor is not just enough for you to say you can, you can be a president. So I think, uh, um, that the, the fact that he was a vice president, and I'm sure he has been in acting capacities one way or the other, so he knows what the city is all about. Uh, so I think uh, for this reason and others, I think he is the right person for Nigerians to vote. Okay.